Hello again, I'm Bob Weir with another video interview of People in the News in North Texas. My special guest today is Watson Crumby, a veteran of World War II and the Korean War. Mr. Crumby is a resident of Robeson Ranch, a beautiful resort community in North Texas. Thank you for being here, Mr. Crumby. Yes, thank you. If you would, please tell our viewers about the reasons you enlisted in the Marines back in 1943. I was 16 years old, December 7, 1941, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. Uh, the person I grew up with, who lived straight across the street from me in Dallas, and one that lived in the next block down were both sailors aboard the USS Arizona, and they were both killed that day, as well as a Marine uh, who would be my future brother-in-law. Also, another Marine who had been captured in the Philippines and survived the Bataan Death March. And uh, it, patriotism ran high, and it was my intention to avenge Pearl Harbor, and I enlisted at the age of 18 as soon as I could. And, and what was the mood of our country um, after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941? Patriotism ran very high, and uh, the uh, uh, the mood was revenge, as best I can say. Yeah. Yes. So it was kind of a, the, the whole country felt it. Absolutely. Know, yes, that's attacked. true. Yes. Uh, you were an infantry assault demolitionist. Please explain what that means. I carried a 20-pound high explosive charge uh, in a satchel called C2 at the time, and uh, that was used to uh, throw into caves and destroy Japanese pillboxes or machine gun nests, and also caves on Okinawa, uh, tombs on Okinawa. And the um, average life of a demolitionist was about 10 minutes in combat, but I served on a team, a flamethrower, a bazooka, and a BAR, Browning Automatic Rifleman. We served as a team. You know, there are several well-known terms and names connected to the Second World War. For example, the Bataan Death March, the invasion of Saipan, the battles of Guadalcanal and Okinawa. Okinawa, they were all part of the, the World War II experiences. I understand that you and your regiment fought for 82 days straight to capture Okinawa. Yes. Um, we landed on April the 1st, uh, Easter Sunday, 1945. It was also April Fool's Day, and we landed on the post. It was known as the damnedest battlefield because there were no, there was no opposition. And for uh, seven days, we uh, did not see any Japanese, and then we were ambushed. And we, the Sixth Marine Division, which I was a part of, took the northern half of Okinawa, and then we were sent south, where the Japanese commander had. Uh, uh, formed an underground line of defense, and that's where the, most of the battle took place. 82 straight days, my goodness, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's, that's incredible. Um, what was of the, was it like uh, getting food and, and water and, and stuff like that? I mean, you were well supplied? We lived on rations for the 82 days, um, and yes, we had plenty of water, and uh, the the defense line I was to mention there uh, was uh, we we were involved in a series of hills known as Sugarloaf, and Sugarloaf we captured eleven times and lost it ten times in a period of seven days, and in that battle, those seven days, the 29th Regiment suffered more casualties than any regiment in Marine Corps history for a single battle. Mm -hmm. When, uh, when that war ended, you enlisted in the reserves as an artilleryman. A few years later, the Korean War began and you were back into the action. What was that like? After being discharged in World War II, uh, I felt that war with Russia was imminent. And uh, I did not want to go back to war with Russia as an as a demolitionist. So I enlisted to get my, what we call MOS, Military Occupation Specialty changed to artilleryman, and uh, I'd been married 10 days when I was called to active duty, and six weeks later I was in combat in Korea. 
and you were part of a fierce battle at the Chosin Reservoir in North Korea, which became known as the most epic battle in Marine Corps history. Yes. Can you tell us about that a little? At, uh, MacArthur had told us he would be home for Christmas, and uh, everyone was uh, quite happy, and all of a sudden we found ourselves surrounded uh, 15,000 United Nations troops by 120,000 Chinese with orders to annihilate us to the last man. And uh, the temperature dropped at uh, times as low as 60 degrees below zero, in which we had to fight. And uh, to survive, we would have to fight our way some 75 miles to a seaport where the Navy was waiting to evacuate us. And in doing so, we decimated 10 Chinese divisions and suffered 12,000 casualties of our own out of 15,000 uh, due to weather-related and enemy-inflicted. Oh, and it took place at the reservoir in North Korea, just below the border with China. Uh, the reservoir was named Chosin, C-H-O-S-I-N. And since it uh, that's where the battle started. It's been known from that day to this as the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir. And because so few of us survived, we're known today as the Chosen Few. The Chosen Few, the yes. Chosen Few. And on November 1st, at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, a documentary entitled The Battle of Chosen will air on the American Experience on local PBS stations. Yes. And you uh, were one of the people interviewed for that. Yes. But there were a lot of veterans interviews, so I don't know sure. how many sure. will be used. Sure. Well, but that's got to be yes. that's got to be great. That's yes. something uh, I I certainly will be watching, and I'll great. I'll make, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's premiere, world premiere. Well, wow, that's great. I'll have my friends watching it too. I'll be uh, getting this information out Good. to them. I want to ask you something else. As part of the information you sent me, you said Tootsie Rolls saved our lives. Can you yes. tell us about that? Yes, I can. The code word for mortar ammunition, 60 millimeter mortar ammunition, was Tootsie Rolls. We radioed Japan for mortar ammunition using the code word, but Japan took it literally and they flew over with C-119 flying box cars and showered us with Tootsie Rolls. Now everything was frozen, we did not have any food, not have any water, not have any sleep. The Tootsie Rolls we could put in our mouth and thaw them and they gave us the uh, energy and the um, ability to sustain the, the weather. Now, CEO of Tootsie Roll Company uh, will be a part of our dedication to a monument that we're building at uh, the National Marine Corps Museum in Quantico, Virginia. And Tootsie Rolls are at all of our reunions, scattered all over the registration desk and all over the tables at our banquets. I could imagine they would be. Yes. Uh, I never heard that before. That that is yes. that's marvelous. Uh, uh, you you also said something about the three wise men as a symbol, and uh, that is uh, part of the dedication uh, ceremony. The star is known as the star of Kotori. We um, were we were scattered into segments along the uh, seventy-five miles, and the last outpost was a place called Kotori. And the uh, Chinese had gathered there, and uh, it was snowing heavily, and visibility was poor. The Chinese would overrun Kotori if the weather did not clear, and we would possibly have been annihilated. So the Marines prayed that night for the skies to clear, and then just before dawn, this one lone star appeared in the east, and the Marines knew that their prayers had been answered, and that star has been compared to the same star that three wise men saw long ago. Uh, well, I, I want to sincerely thank you, uh, Mr. Crombie. This is a special pleasure for me because I have so much respect for the sacrifices you made for the rest of us. Uh, you are truly a representative of what has been called the greatest generation. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank I, you. I appreciate you. And thank you for watching.